Cockroach King, The Father's Day King, Train Guy, Man With Stick and Bobby Carpets Mortimer, to name just a few. Hello, good morning, Bob Mortimer. How are you, darling? Hi, Zoe. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's lovely to have you on the show, as always. Um, I am asking the questions today, but you've become quite the interviewer too, Bob. Let's have a listen. Stolen much in your life. Do you eat meat? Which ah. sort, what's your favourite meat? Would you like to be able to fly? So, I put your questions to you, Bob, this morning. What is your favourite meat? Lamb. Lovely. Do you know what? I'm going through a bit of a lamb phase at the moment. I'd a lovely lamb back this week. It's kebab form. Yes. <laughs> but only occasionally. OK, only occasionally as a treat. Yeah. And would you like to be able to fly right up to the sky? <laughs> Yeah, well, if I could fly, I'd, I'd certainly want it to be in the sky. Uh, yeah, I would love to. Wouldn't everyone? It's, yeah. It's probably the best thing you could do. I know, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we've been loving Train Guy, but also the other thing that fascinates us about you've been selling cat names. Um, we have a cat that loves our show called Henry the Disco Cat. Have you got yeah. any more disco-related cat names that might be on offer to people out there struggling? Well, I just a simple one, I think. Dance Alan. <laughs> Please let us know if you will now name your kitten Dance Alan this morning. Um, you're back making Gone Fishing, a new series, Series 5. We absolutely love it. Are you managing to stay upright? And have you caught a fish that has been a tad elusive to you during your travels? Um... Yeah, I haven't managed to stay upright. I've had some really bad falls. It's um, I'm better this se season because for the first four seasons, the reason I was falling so much was because I was wearing Paul's wading boots and they're about five sizes too big for me. But I've got my own boots now. <laughs> and you can call me Boots McFoolish. Yeah, I've got my own boots now. So, But I've had a couple of nasty falls, yeah. They hurt. Oh, bless you. Bless you. I, I don't mean to laugh when we watch you. It, it, it's the way you often do it in incredible slow motion. Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, they're uh, pensioner falls, aren't they? <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, I can't believe it's taken you this many series to get your own waders. Uh, do they feel fabulous? Is it a nice, oh, tight fit? They feel amazing, yeah. It's one of... It's one of life's great pleasures uh, that I hadn't discovered when you've got waders on. To stand in water and not be not be touched by it is, you know, it's fabulous. I suppose a fish has no concept of what water is, do they? Don't suppose. And that's you feel a bit like that when you've got your waders on. You think Absolutely. you're in an unusual place to dwell. But, I, I'd never thought about it like that. Yeah, fish, they've got no idea of the concept of how water feels. They're just in it. They just exist in it. Oh, so yes. It's just there. There it is. Um, your beautiful book, And Away, um, has a brand new chapter. It's in paperback. I mean, it's a bestseller, number one bestseller. Um, everybody has loved it. Tell me about the brand new chapter. Um, I, I looked back at the uh, the book and I thought music's been a big part of my life, so since I was very small. And I didn't think I'd said enough about um, sort of my love of music and some of the little tales from the, the um, times that I've been involved with musicians and um, music. Um, so I thought I'd put some of those stories in. It made me think I should have made the book a bit longer, really, but there you go. Someone told me that a book, if a book's over 300 pages, that they, they won't buy it. And I'm a bit similar, actually, so... I like this. So like people who pick up a book and read the back page, there are people who pick up a book and check how many pages there are. Yeah, and I've, I've got a lot of sympathy with that, yeah. OK. Maybe if you do another version of the book, you could take something out, sub something down. I'm not sure what, because it's all gold, I have to say. And then add some extra bits on the back. Uh, something we were loving, I, I, I absolutely love, the list of the things that your mum has taught you in life, which yeah. are just wonderful. And just reading that list last night, I learned things um, that I didn't even know. Um, the unusual haircuts are more than acceptable. <laughs> so good. Uh, if you've got an egg, you've got a meal. And that trapped wind is better shifted by rubbing the back rather than the tummy. I've tried yeah. this this morning, Bob. <laughs> Were you windy this morning? Oh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> 
and it, it absolutely does work. So that's a beautiful thing. But also the list of you, you've sort of chosen your favourite albums of all time. We were very excited because uh, in that list is actually an album by Tom, uh, who works on our show, Tom Fenner. So in here, you've got Electric Ladyland, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Hajira, uh, Joni Mitchell, one of my faves myself, um, and uh, you've got Orange Juice, You Can't Hide Your Love Forever, Chill Out the KLF. But there it is. The clock comes down the stair, the stairs. <laughs> by Mike <Yes>. for Disney. <laughs> Yes, I mean, these lists change from day to day, but I imagine on that day I'd listen to that. I love that album. It was I listened to it a lot from a very nice period in my life, so... Oh, fantastic. I love all these stories that, that, that feature in here. But we'll talk more about what's in the book. But we thought another day, Bob, so many questions coming in for you this morning. Uh, tell Bob to just number all pages after 299 as 299, Colin Thetford. Not a bad idea. I know. He's a genius. How is Ted the dog? And does Ted go on all fishing trips, says David Dorset? He comes on um, about 50% of them. He can't come when we're on boats. And he doesn't come when he can't be bothered. <laughs> he's, he's got a mind of his own. There's a lot more Ted in the new series, which I think people will be pleased about. Very much so. He fits in perfectly with the two of you, I feel. You know, like when Paul gets all curmudgeonly and even Ted the dog won't come when he can't be bothered. That's perfect. Um, how is Paul, by the way? Paul's great. I've just received a text from him saying, hope you are OK. <laughs> so that, that's the care inside of Paul. Oh, he's a special man. Uh, question for Bob. Will he be bringing out a cookbook to accompany the next series of Gone Fishing, says Neil? No, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. My um, my food's deteriorating. You know, when you by the time you get to my age, you have about ten dishes you can cook, and I've I've used them all up. Okay, so now I'm making mashed potato out of crisps. I'm really <laughs> struggling. Bless you. Um, the book is so wonderful. There's so many great stories about your family, about your mum and your family and your mates and the adventures you've been on. I particularly love all the stories of you and Jim on your travels. They make me cry. Like I had tears rolling down my face last night. Um, you know, and how certain things have inspired some of the work you've done. Um, tell me about the advert you, you made with him. I mean, this is quite a bonkers thing. But the... Um... The boost one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's when we um, went on a naked scorpion hunt just to fill the lunch hour. <laughs> and we had an encounter, a nude encounter with a snake. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, I can't sum it up in a couple of sentences, but <laughs> it really happened. And it was nice that uh, there's a photo in the book of, um, I think it's me, just commencing our nude adventure. It's, you it's, do that stuff when you're young and you know, young and drunk. Oh dear, I, I love it. There are so many stories like this. They're just just wonderful. It does make you cry laughing, but it also makes you, it's really moving the book as well. Um, uh, 23 million people watched that advert when it first went out uh, between Cory. 23 million people. Uh, that was the Papa Nicole one. Oh. For the, for the, for the, for the car. Oh <laughs> yes, my. I married, I married Nicole in the end. Um, <laughs> I know, 23 million, blimey. I mean, that's bonkers, isn't it? You Different know, we could get audiences like that. It's incredible. So uh, not only have you got And Away, which is such a wonderful read, uh, but also I've heard that there's more writing coming, more books, something. Yeah, I've written a, 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 no, a novel. That sounds a bit pompous. I've written a, a, a story. It's 299 pages. <laughs> of course What's it is. Uh, What's it about? And when, when can we get our mitts on it? It's, I suppose it's a, it's a, a romance, really. It's um, about two, a lonely lady and a lonely chap in London and Brighton, and a kind of will they, won't they, should they, shouldn't they. There's a bit of a mystery in there as well. It's called the Satsuma Complex, because that's the book that they are both reading in the, um, in the story that kind of helps them along their way. Oh, it um, just sounds wonderful. Oh, when's it coming out? I think it's coming out at the end of about October the 26th. Um, yeah, so um, I really enjoyed writing the autobiography because I can sit on my... I wrote the, the, the new book, The Satsuma Complex, um, in the retail park in Tunbridge Wells when I was doing um, a, a, a London day. 
you know, when I was writing about London and at Ashdown Forest in my car when I was writing the sequences in Brighton. So that's a nice little detail. I love that. So if anyone spotted you sitting in a retail park, they're, they're, <laughs> that <laughs> explains. I like that, though. It puts you in a different headspace for the character that you're writing. That is so clever. How, how do you feel about it coming out? Are you quite excited and all the feelings? I suppose I'm worried because it's um, it's the first time I've done it, but I, 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 I've sort of got determined as I've old, as I got older to try some different things. Do you know that old one of the the old lady? Um, it's kind of about the book's also a little bit about how much um, boys miss their mums forever, you know. And um, the mum in this one says that um, you don't start living until you get out of your comfort zone. And kind of the book's a little bit of. You know, that's what the book's about, really. Oh, it sounds beautiful. And I imagine it'll be very funny as well. I cannot wait to read it. Thanks for telling us about that this morning. That's that's very exciting indeed. Uh, by the way, I know you and Lisa love the birds in the garden and you love your telly. What have you been watching recently, Bob? Um, well, yesterday I, was, I did quite a lengthy um, below deck session, which I enjoy <laughs> very much. And um, last night I did... Um, Flip one of the the flipping shows. I can't remember which one it was. Desert Flippers or Flip Flop? You know where they do up houses. Yeah, brilliant. I know what you mean. Flip Flop. It's a great name for a, for a tech. I know the ones you mean. Bob, it is always such a treat to talk to you on the show. We're really looking forward to the Satsuma Complex. Uh, Bob Mortimer. The Have a cup of two two on me, Zoe. Thank you are you. all. And Edwardian Cockrell. Thank you for having us. <laughs> We're doing Bob Mortimer, you wonderful. Take it, darling. Love to Paul. Bye. Bye. You're all official.